Hi, this is Cecil. In today's Yellowstone podcast, I'm going to tell you about a hike to Yellowstone's most unusual geyser basin and one of my favorites. It's called Monument Geyser Basin, and you actually have to look for it. You're not going to find it on the side of the road. Let me tell you more. To access the trailhead, the easiest way is to look for Beryl Spring, continue north from Beryl, and you'll see a little parking lot on the left-hand side, and that's where you'd park to hike up to Monument Geyser Basin. Here it is in a little more detail. Let's say we're coming from West Yellowstone. You'll drive east from West Yellowstone through the Madison Valley. You'll get to Madison Junction, turn left or north, continue up, and you'll go past Gibbon Falls. Keep your eyes open for Beryl Spring, which is a colorful spring, which most of the time has a lot of steam coming off it. And then, as I mentioned, the trailhead little parking lot will be to your left. And um, the little pullout is also just a little to the south of Gibbon Meadows on Yellowstone's lower loop on the west side of the lower loop. Well, what's so unusual about Monument Geyser Basin? There's a lot of things unusual about Monument Geyser Basin, starting with the fact that it's on top of a hill and you're going to be hiking in between 600 and 700 feet up. In other words, the vertical gain is in between 600 and 700 feet, which is approximately in between 183 meters and 213 meters. Now, I know that most of you will be just listening to this podcast, but um, if you'd like to see a video of the entire trail, we have it in our YouTube channel, and there's two ways that you can access that. You can either go to virtualyellowstonetours.com, that's virtualyellowstonetours.com, look for this particular hike, and we have several Monument Geyser Basin hikes. You can look at uh, the full hike, a shorter version, or a highlights version, or just what it looks like up at the top. Click on that link, it'll take you to YouTube, and you can watch the video on YouTube. Alternatively, go straight to YouTube, search for Yellowstone Tours. That's Yellowstone Tours without a space in between Yellowstone and Tours. YouTube will ask you, did you mean Yellowstone Space Tours? Say no, you want Yellowstone Tours. And uh, if you click on Yellowstone Tours, that'll take you to our channel and you can search for the video over there. Let's talk about the hike now. Number one, any time that you are moving away from a built-up area, or in this case from a road, the Grand Loop Road, make sure that you have bear spray with you. You may ask, well, why do I need bear spray if I'm going up a hill? Trust me, bears can be anywhere in Yellowstone and you don't want to be caught by surprise. Secondly, take a lot of water with you, especially if this is in the summer. Thirdly, be aware that you are at altitude. I don't know what the exact elevation um, of the trailhead is, but I would guess something a little over 7,000 feet. So you are already at altitude and you may find the, you may find it difficult to climb up and to breathe. Then as always, make sure you have a good pair of walking shoes. And a lot of people like to take a hiking stick, a walking stick with them. Um, You may find it easier in some of the steeper parts of the, of the trail. So, you park in the little parking lot, you get out of your car, you get on the trail, and it is so beautiful. You're right next to the Gibbon River. The Gibbon Gibbon River is flowing in the opposite direction to where you'll be walking. You'll be heading out and uh, off in the distance, um, Gibbon Meadows will be in front of you, and you'll carry on walking next to the Gibbon Meadows, excuse me, next to the Gibbon River, for a little while and eventually you'll turn the corner to your left and oh no you have to start going uphill and boy is it an uphill it is pretty steep I've already mentioned that you are at altitude and most people are going to huff and puff 
their way to the top. The advice I always give people is don't be afraid to stop. I really encourage you to, to stop along the way uh, because there's no point in overdoing it, especially if you're not used to the, to the elevation. You'll find that parts of the trail are steep and then they get even steeper. You'll carry on uphill and you'll find along the way that there are some beautiful views, if you look behind you now going uphill, of Gibbon Meadows and the Gibbon River flowing through Gibbon, Gibbon um, Meadows with uh, the snow-capped Gallatin Mountains in the background. In fact, if you're watching this on YouTube, the picture that I've got up, at, up on, the, on the screen, you'll see some of the thermal features up at the top with the, given, with the Gallatin Mountains in the background, and it really is a stunning sight, especially if you're lucky enough to be there on a, uh, on a bluebird sky day. How long is it going to take you? Well, I can tell you that when I do it, it takes me less than half an hour. But then my primary concern is to get to the top and really enjoy myself out there. I encourage you to take a lot longer to do the to do the hike. How long is it? Well, the estimates vary. Uh, some estimates are a mile one way, others uh, are 1.4 miles. So just assume that it's somewhere in between one and 1.4 miles uphill. So it is um, in between two and 2.8 miles on a round trip basis, and in between 3.2. Uh, and 4.5 kilometers also on a round trip basis. So it's not that far, but the fact that you are at altitude and um, you are climbing up a fairly steep hill will make it a bit more challenging. One piece of advice that I'd like to give you, if, if, if I may, and admittedly it's easier for me and other people who live in the area, but what I generally do is if I'm driving along in that area up the western portion of the lower loop past Beryl Spring before I get to Gibbon Meadow and I see that there are no cars parked in the in the little pullout for the trailhead to Monument Geyser Basin, I would be very tempted to drive. It is so cool to get up there and you have the whole Geyser Basin to yourself. Generally speaking, it's unusual to see more than two or perhaps three three cars there. But if you do have the time and you're exploring Yellowstone, if uh, you drive past, it's a beautiful day, you've got the water, you've got everything else uh, I mentioned, or a good pair of hiking shoes with ankle supports, I would suggest that you pull in and take advantage of the opportunity to have the whole geyser basin to yourself. You'll find that as you head uphill, that one of the challenging aspects of this hike Unlike, say, the Mystic Falls hike when you continue on to the Biscuit Basin Overlook, on that hike you can often see where the top of the hill, the hill is. Here you can't. The topography is such, and there's so many high trees, that you don't know how close to the top of the hill that you are. And uh, that does make it a little bit more challenging. But eventually, as you'll see in the videos that I mentioned at virtualyellowstonetours.com or on our YouTube channel, that um, it does start leveling out and you know then that you are approaching the, the top. Before you get to Monument Geyser Basin itself, keep your eyes open to the left. There's the most stunning view from the top of this hill now looking back down, so looking in a general southerly direction with the Madison River far below you, um, the general direction of the Madison Valley off in the distance, and it's a beautiful picture, never mind uh, a, an incredibly beautiful sight. You'll carry on walking and you'll start to see a pale area, and that pale paleness is caused by Sinter, and I've mentioned to you before that Sinter is one of the minerals, the main mer mineral in fact, that gets brought up from underground by the various thermal features, by the geysers and the hot springs. So when you see an area in Yellowstone that is of a pale color, like a gray or very uh, like palish white, you know that there either was a thermal area 
there or there is still a thermal area there. So you'll start to see the center everywhere. And talking of center, what is interesting is that scientists, when they study the unusual type of center formations at the top of Monument Geyser Basin, it is very similar to the formations that are to be found, what's called siliceous spires, um, which are found on the floor of Yellowstone Lake. So they're made out of a, a type of center um, down at the bottom of Yellowstone Lake, which leads scientists to believe that at one stage, where you are now, right at the very top, there was once a glacially dammed lake. And um, this is where the origin of these um, of these center formation formations come come from. So you'll be approaching the Geyser Basin, and guys, please, please be really careful. When you get up there, you'll find there's no rangers telling you that you can't go where you want to go. There's no boardwalk system. There's no fences. There's no barricades. As is the case so often in much of Yellowstone's front country and all of the back country, you need to take precautions. You need to be careful. Number one, you don't want to hurt yourself. Number two, you don't want to damage the thermal features. Well, you may be asking, how can I hurt myself? Well, in so many of the thermal areas, the ground that is around you, the ground that is around the boardwalks is so, so thin. You'll see this on Firehole Lake Drive when you take um, a walk along the boardwalks on either side uh, of the parking lot. You'll see it in the lower geyser basin when you've left the mud pots behind you um, and you're heading more or less, I guess that would be in a westerly direction. The ground is really, really thin, so there's no one there to stop you from tumbling down. So where you see a hot spring, where you see other evidence of thermal features, please be careful, stay away from them. There's also this um, really cool fumarole up on one of the hills, and it's so easy to access it. Don't get too close to it. If you fall into it, not only will it be extremely difficult to get you out, it is very likely that the noxious fumes, the poisonous gases coming off it, will kill you. So please be careful. Now, when you get to the top, you'll notice, as I touched on before, that some of the thermal features are basically in a shape of a chimney. And as a chimney does, there's smoke, or in this case steam, uh, coming out of the top. The best time to see this is when the weather is cooler. If you go there in the middle of the summer, the steam coming off is, um, is really limited. But it is such an unusual geyser basin, uh, made even more special by the fact that you've really had to exert yourself to get up to the, to the top. The hike is well worthwhile. I like to try and do this hike once a year if at all possible. And then the views at the top are just so stunning as well across Gibbon Meadows and then uh, off to the Gallatin Mountains in the, in the distance. Remember that if you'd like to take an escorted hike up to the top of Monument Geyser Basin, we offer that. Please go to yellowstonedayhikes.com. That's yellowstonedayhikes.com where you'll see any number of shorter hikes that we offer in Yellowstone National Park, ranging from about two hours to a day or so. You can also, as I mentioned before, see a virtual Yellowstone tour in video format at virtualyellowstonetours.com, virtualyellowstonetours.com. That will take you, to our, take you to YouTube and you can access the rest of the hikes in our YouTube channel. And finally, check out and listen to all of our Yellowstone podcasts at yellowstonepodcasts.com. Thank you for listening along today, and I hope you make it to Yellowstone sometime.